looking at two Nigeria right now, where Starcom's issued weak first quarter numbers yesterday, showing a 7% year-on-year drop in consolidated revenues. This due to a 32% year-on-year decline in voice RPU and more poor subscriber-based dynamics as well. The EBITDA margin of 20% was also lower year-on-year, -year, where in the first quarter last year, Starcom's registered a 28% margin. The net loss, though, was moderate at 1.4 billion naira due to Forex gains. To unpack some of the detail around these numbers, Maher Kubain, CEO of Starcoms, joins me now. Thanks so much, Maher, for joining us this afternoon. Good morning, Alicia. Thank you for having us. Good to see you again. Well, speaking to a few market commentators, the market pretty disappointed with your Q1 numbers. EBITDA falling a 32%, revenue declining 6.8%. And it seems that it's RPU levels that have really put you in the pressure pot for the first quarter. Uh, yeah, let me just clarify a couple of items. If you were to compare the Q4 EBITDA of 2009, uh, it was directly in line with Q1 uh, 2010. If you recall when we presented uh, to you last time, we spoke about adjustments and year ad adjustments, which are typically taken at year end. What we've done this year uh, is we started taking adjustments on a quarterly basis. So assuming the adjustments of, of you know, uh, bad debt to state organizations, slow moving stock, the actual EBITDA for Q1 2010 was in line and in fact slightly better than Q4 2009. And if you take the average of, of uh, 2009 EBITDA was roughly around 1.8 uh, billion Naira per quarter. So we're actually in line. Now the second reason uh, the numbers that you mentioned should not be totally disappointing is we focused much of our effort as we said last time we were with you on the data and broadband uh, bread mm -hmm. market where we have a leadership uh, uh, in Nigeria and that grew by 21 percent. Uh, and the last item it is correct. Uh, the voice ARPUs have in fact declined but if you compare the trend in the world the decline uh, for Starcoms in Nigeria has been much lower than that of the downward ARPU trend uh, uh, in, in elsewhere in the world. So we're pretty you know, happy with our Q1 results because we focus on the data on broadband. Yeah. We focus on reducing losses. You mentioned 1.4 billion for the same period last year. It, it, that was almost 3.4 billion uh, loss. So we've mm -hmm. improved the operational cash flow. We've improved the margins. We've improved the data revenues. But you are correct. The voice ARPUs have in fact been under pressure. Where that is the case in terms of that average revenue per user, I mean, what kind of subscription numbers are you seeing? I mean, the issue is the issue just a matter of consumers spending less at this stage of the game while the, the, the subscriber number uh, numbers grow? Or is that subscriber number base being hit as well? It's combined. You, you actually hit the nail right on the head. The combination of two elements. As you compete at the bottom of the pyramid, the subscribers traditionally at the bottom of the pyramid spend lower than uh, other subscribers. So if you talk specifically revenue per user, we have added and we've had an active base growth of roughly about 20.4%, which is pretty healthy. Again, that did not translate into revenues for two reasons. One, the bottom of the pyramid spend, but two, the, the dynamics of the financial markets that continue to impact the world as well as Nigeria, the banking reforms, uh, is forcing people to spend less. And it's not yeah. just Starcoms, it is everywhere. What is interesting is Starcoms now is beginning to model its business for cost efficiencies and average minute so, per user. A lot of people talk about ARPUs, we yeah. should really talk about average minute per user. So let's hone in on those cost efficiencies then, because I was saying uh, on an earlier show this morning, while consumers seem to be uh, spending less, the business seems to be spending more. We've seen operating costs up 12.4% while net interest expenses more than doubled uh, during the period. We know that, that as a result of that uh, $60 million uh, bond, uh, loan that was converted into Naira. But uh, certainly cost management crops up as a concern for the investor. How are you managing those costs moving forward? Excellent question. Uh, well, if you were to look at the year-end 2009 results, we managed to grow our EBITDA by almost 700%. And those cost efficiencies that we've built in 2009 continue in 2010. One of the reasons there was an average growth or an increase in net OPEX expenses was we launched close to seven or eight major locations within Nigeria, geographic expansion, 
towards uh, November and December last year. That carries around 100 base station costs, OPEX and yeah. maintenance costs, whilst the revenues don't come in until Q2 and Q3 as you build up and, and add subscriber base and usages of, on those uh, regions. So that's one of the first reasons. The second reason is Starcoms has focused traditionally on profitability rather than subscriber numbers. We are now focusing more on data growth, but at the same time, we're looking to reduce our debt portfolio by paying down much more debt. The reason being is the banking reform has now forced interest rates down. So instead of keeping cash yeah. in the bank, we're paying down debt to deleverage the company. Uh, how are you planning then uh, with that on the cards in terms of reducing your debt levels? How are you planning to fund your capital, uh, uh, your capital expenditure moving forward? Excellent question. As we have now reached a sufficient footprint within Nigeria, if you recall, our unified access license does not have certain rollout obligations as did the initial uh, uh, licenses given to GSM in 2002. So therefore, we do not have to cover villages that have you know, much lower return on investment rates. So from a coverage point of view, we today cover an entire base of all the A, B, and C class cities. Therefore, our funding requirements are not as large as it is for other operators who yeah. have those rollout obligations. The second thing is we actually have our own transmission uh, microwave backbone, thus allowing us to reduce OPEX of leasing fiber to connect the cities to one another due to the lack of national fiber from, from the government. So therefore, our OPEX model is much more efficient than any other company. Yeah. So therefore, our funding requirements is purely for maintenance capex mm -hmm. and perhaps some additional new capex for data rollout. For example, the advanced EVD or RFB which we're bringing to the market in the next two months. Well, with that That's being really your, weird. sorry to interrupt, but we're running out of time here and I want to get through quite a bit. So while those are your funding requirements then and you've highlighted the fact that you've got data as, uh, you know, being seen as your major, uh, one of your major components to revenue growth moving forward, we've got the high cost of internet access being seen as a hindrance to significant enough of an uptake here. I mean, what are your plans as far as costs are concerned and using that to leverage off accessibility uh, to your consumers. Well, as you are aware, um, internet penetration in Nigeria is still below 5%, yeah. and Starcoms is the leading mobile broadband provider in the country today. So that leadership we want to continue to expand on, what's helping us quite a bit is the fact that we have ample coverage, and with our CDMA technology, we, have data prov we provide data support across all our regions where you transport your modem card. But what's more interesting is that the main one cable and other subsea cable that gives access to the internet bandwidth from Nigeria to the world is coming to Nigeria between the July time frame and the August time frame. That's going to drive the cost per megabyte on bandwidth by about eight times. That's going to allow companies like Starcoms and others to provide faster expansion at lower rates but with better margins. So consumers then, bottom line, can be looking forward to lower uh, internet uh, access, uh, uh, lower cost of uh, accessibility to the internet moving forward. Absolutely correct. Okay. As well as away from the main pricing plans, Starcom has followed a new strategy of add-on uh, uh, plans to your main plans, which allows you flexibility in charging, allows you flexibility in top-up, mm -hmm. allows you flexibility how much you want to spend on your internet. Unlike other companies who cap your bandwidth to three gigabytes for downloads, we don't do that. But the second thing they do is they have certain stuck tariff plans, three or four. We give you a variety yeah. of tariff plans and add-on plans to allow you access to so the Sarah, just very quickly, how are you then viewing your position within the evolving competitive uh, landscape that we're seeing in Nigeria right now, where we've heard India's Bharti Airtel has completed now its $9 billion acquisition of uh, African operations from Kuwait's Zane? Well, Zane, Zane uh, or, or Bharti Airtel or Bharti Zane, new entity, has two strategies they will follow. The first is differentiation. Uh, and that happens by outsourcing, network cost management, mm -hmm. and tariffing, and customer service, which the country is weak in. Then the second thing they're looking for, and they've announced this today, they're looking to partner with tier two operators in the radio access network and the BSS network in order to leverage and gain strength against the giants in Nigeria. So in fact, their coming to Nigeria will help everybody be better in their cost management. We are today probably one of the best run yeah. companies from a profit 
profitability point of view, but the second point, when they partner with their tier two supply uh, providers like ourselves, it will help everybody partner and create a much bigger pie for everyone rather than hurt the business. Well, so Mahir, we're looking forward to them coming. We're